And seeing the multitudes, Jesus went up onto the mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who sorrow, because they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, because they will inherit the earth. Blessed are they who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, because they will be fed. Blessed are they who have pity, because they will be pitied. Blessed are the pure in heart, because they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, because they will be called sons of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for their righteousness, because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they shall revile you and persecute you and speak every evil thing of you lying because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because your reward in heaven is great. For thus did they persecute the prophets before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its power, with what shall it be salted? It is good for nothing, but to be thrown away and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city cannot be hidden when it is set on top of a hill, nor do men light a lamp and set it under a basket, but they set it on a stand, and it gives its light to all in the house. So let your light shine before men, so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I've come to destroy the law and the prophets. I've not come to destroy, but to complete. Indeed, I say to you, until the sky and the earth are gone, not one iota or one end of a letter must go from the law until all is done. He who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men accordingly shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. He who performs and teaches these commandments shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, if your righteousness is not more abundant than that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you may not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the ancients, you shall not murder, and he who murders will be liable to judgment. I say to you that any man who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. And he who says to his brother, you fool, shall be liable before the Sanhedrin. And he who says to his brother, sinner, shall be liable to Gehenna. And if you bring your gift to the altar... And there remember that your brother has some grievance against you. Leave your gift before the altar and go. First be reconciled with your brother. And then go and offer your gift. Be quick to be conciliatory with your adversary at law when you're in the street with him. For fear your adversary may turn you over to the judge and the judge to the officer and you be thrown into pr prison. Truly, I tell you, you cannot come out of there until you pay the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. I tell you that any man who looks at a woman so as to desire her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye makes you go amiss, take it out, cast it from you. It is better that one part of you should be lost instead of your whole body being cast into Gehenna. And if your right hand makes you go amiss, cut it off, cast it away from you. It is better that one part of you should be lost instead of your whole body going to Gehenna. It has been said, if a man puts away his wife, let him give her a contract of divorce. I tell you that any man who puts away his wife, except for the reason of infidelity, is making her the victim of adultery. And any man who marries a wife who has been divorced is committing adultery. Again, you have heard that it has been said to the ancients, you shall not swear falsely, but you shall make good your oaths to the Lord. I tell you not to swear at all. Not by heaven, because it is the throne of God. Not by earth, because it is the footstool for his feet. Not by Jerusalem, because it is the city of the great king. Not by your own head, because you cannot make one hair of it white or black. Let your speech be yes, yes. 
or no. No. More than that comes from the evil one. You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I tell you not to resist a wicked man, but if one strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other one to him also. And if a man wishes to go to law with you and take your tunic, give him your cloak also. And if one makes you his porter for a mile, go with him for two miles. Give to him who asks, and do not turn away from one who wishes to borrow from you. You have heard that it has been said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. I tell you, love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. Because he makes his son rise on the evil and the good and reigns on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what do you do that is more than others do? Do not even the pagans do the same? Be perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. Take care not to practice your righteous publicly before men so as to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no recompense from your Father in heaven. Then when you do charity, do not have a a trumpet blown before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets so that men think well of them. Truly, I tell you, they have their due reward. But when you do charity, let your left hand not know what your right hand is doing, so that your charity may be in secret, and your Father who sees what is secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites who love to stand up in the synagogues and the corners of the squares to pray so that they may be seen by men. Truly, I tell you, they have their due reward. But when you pray, go into your inner room and close the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is secret will reward you. When you pray, do not babble as the pagans do, for they think that by saying much, they will be heard. Don't be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray like this, then. Our Father in heaven, May your name be hallowed. May your kingdom come. May your will be done as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And don't bring us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive men their offenses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive you your offenses. And when you fast, do not scowl like the hypocrites, for they make ugly faces so that men can see that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have have their due reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not show as fasting to men, but to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees what is secret will reward you. Do not store up your treasures on earth where the moth and rust destroy them and where burglars dig through and steal them, but store up your treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where burglars do not dig through and steal. For where your treasure is, there also will be your heart. The lamp of the body is the eye. Thus, if your eye is clear, your whole body is full of light. But if your eye is soiled, your whole body is dark. If the light in you is darkness, how dark it is. The rabbis had a saying in Jesus' time that somebody who was generous had a good eye. That's what he's talking about there, generosity. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will cling to one and despise the other. 
You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I tell you, don't take thought for your life, what you will eat or for your body, what you will wear. Is not your life more than its food and your body more than its clothing? Consider the birds of the sky, that they do not sow or harvest or collect for their granaries, and your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not preferred above them? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one foot to your height? And why do you take thought about clothing? Study the lilies of the field, how they grow. They do not toil or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his glory was clothed like one of these lilies. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which grows today and tomorrow is thrown into a fire, Will he not much more clothe you, you men of little faith? Do not then worry and say, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? For all this, the Gentiles study. Your Father in heaven knows that you need all these things. But seek out first his kingdom and his justice, and all these things will be given to you. Do not then take thought of tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient to the day is its own evil. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. You will be judged by that judgment by which you judge, and your measure will be made by the measure by which you measure. Why do you look at the straw which is in the eye of your brother and not see the log which is in your own eye? Or how will you say to your brother, let me take the straw out of your eye, and look, there's a log in yours. You hypocrite, first take the log out of your eye, and then you will see to take the straw out of the eye of your brother. Do not give what is sacred to dogs, and do not cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and rend you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. Everyone who asks seeks, or who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And for him who knocks, the door will open. But what man is there among you whose son would ask him for bread, and you'd give him a stone? Or ask him for fish, and you give him a snake? If then you who are corrupt know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Whatever you wish men to do to you, so do to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Go in through the narrow gate, because wide and spacious, is the road that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in through it. Because narrow is the gate and cramped the road that leads to life. And few are they who find it. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inside they're ravening wolves. From their fruits you will know them. Do men gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Thus every good tree produces good fruits, but the rotten tree produces bad fruits. A good tree cannot bear bad fruits, nor can a bad tree bear good fruits. Every tree that does not produce good fruit is cut out and thrown in the fire. So from their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will come into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, did we not cast out demons? And in your name, did we not assume great powers? And then I shall admit to them, I never knew you. Go from me, for what you do is lawless. Every man who hears what I say and does what I say will be like a prudent man 
who built his house on a rock. The rain fell, the rivers came, the winds blew and it dashed against the house and it did not fall because the house was founded upon a rock. And every man who hears what I say and does not do what I say will be like the reckless man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the rivers came, and the winds blew and battered the house, and it fell. And that was a great fall. And it happened that when Jesus had ended these words, the multitudes were astonished at his teaching. For he thought, for he taught them as one who has authority and not like their own scribes. There are a lot of things that Jesus says in there. Well, maybe not a lot, but a few that make me uncomfortable. Things that I know that I'm doing wrong, that I should be doing better, or things that are not politically correct in the 21st century to say, in public anyway. This morning, I invite you to reflect on Jesus' instruction, called the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 through 7. We're going to pray, we're going to sing, and then we're going to go into our time of communion. So while we're singing, praying, come up, get the elements. Invite Jesus to teach you to obey him. As we look forward to celebrating Christmas this month, remembering the miraculous baby born in a manger, we also remember the man who was our savior and who spoke with authority and the man whom we've all, most of us anyway, have committed to follow. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to sing. Jesus, your words are life to us. You speak boldly, unapologetically. You invite us to follow you, to follow your way of life, to follow your teaching, to submit ourselves to acting as you would have us act. Humbled before God, not blowing trumpets, not, not showing off how much better we are spiritually, walking with you, trusting you. And it is my prayer that we hear you. Holy Spirit, speak to us this week. Show us the path that we should walk in. Remind us of these things. We desire earnestly to follow you, to be the people that you've taught us to be, to submit to you. And you gladly assist us on this journey. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we can hear it. Speak to us now. Thank you so much.